Um, hi, everybody. My name is, uh, well, my artist name is Flux. Uh, my real name is John. Um, I am a freelance illustrator. I'm a fine artist, um, a designer. And I also do work with Newell Brands um, as a principal designer for a lot of their brands, um, including Sharpie and Prismacolor and a lot of ones that are, are sold at Michael's. Um, and I'm really happy to be here. This is gonna be really fun. Um, essentially, I just wanna do a little uh, portrait sketch and we're gonna go through pencils, the kind of pencils that they're already use, um, you know, and shading. And this is just an example. I believe this may have been included with the the class itself um, and go go from there. So, and I just don't want anyone to feel intimidated, you know, have fun with this. Don't worry about it being perfect, um, but you know, we'll go through all that as we go along. Um, and if you want, we would love to see this stuff shared on the socials. So if you want to tag a Prismacolor um, or make it with Michaels, that would be great. And again, my artist name is Flux. You can actually visit my website or go to any of my social medias, which is Flux artist, F-L-U-X-A-R-T-I-S-T. Um, so with that, if, um, Lindsay, you wouldn't mind switching to the other camera, I'm gonna show some stuff on here. So uh, one of the materials that was mentioned for the class itself are these Prismacolor Premier turquoise pencils. Um, and what's nice about these is these are all mostly soft lead pencils, and I'm gonna get into what that means in a minute. Um, but, you know, with pencils, there are soft and hard lead. Um, you can see on the back here, it has them listed out by B and H. Um, B pencils are softer lead and H pencils are harder lead, which basically means that harder lead is gonna keep a point a lot longer. Softer lead is gonna lose its point a lot faster. Um, and also the harder the lead, the lighter the drawing is going to be, and the softer the lead, the darker it's going to be. And they go in alternate directions. So with this kit, you basically start with H, and then you go to HB, and then you go up to 9B. Um, but the way that the Bs work is as you go up in a number, they get darker. So like an HB is somewhere in the middle of being a soft and a hard pencil. Um, you know, 2B is going to be a little darker, 4B is going to be darker than that, 6B, blah, blah, blah. And then H go in the opposite direction. So as you go up in number with H pencils, they actually get lighter. So there are other kits that have more light pencils. We're really focusing on the darker ones just so we can do some cool shading. Um, but you'll see what's nice about that is that when you work with H pencils, you don't have to erase that much. You can leave that line there and no one's gonna really see it that well. Um, so there is also an F pencil in here and that is just a little bit lighter than an HB. Um, and that's basically it. So also included were, was a reference photo for this and it was a portrait. Um, I actually have it just on my iPad because it's a little easier for me to, to work with that way. But if you wanna print it out um, or pull it up on your screen or whatever, um, you know, whatever works, that's great. And it's nice to have that as a reference. Um, and the first pencil I'm gonna start with is the H. So, you know, when you're working with pencil, you really wanna work from light to dark. And that even goes for color pencils too. Not all tools have that. Like, so for um, with oils, for instance, I work in oil paint too, and I, you go from dark to light. You can work from light to dark, but you know, I work in the old masters um, style and that just tends to work better that way. So um, for this, you know, you might be wondering, okay, where do I start? We've got this head, um, we've got eyes, other things there, right? I mean, everything else, the nose, the hair, um, so when you're looking at your picture, um, one of the things that I would recommend doing, any kind of reference that you're drawing from, if you squint your eyes a little bit and it kind of blurs out the picture, it helps to remove some of the detail and you can sort of see where the biggest shapes are. So for the head, you know, it's kind of like you've got a line on the left-hand side that comes down. And again, we're working with this H pencil because it's the lightest one. And then I've got another line that comes down up here. And this is considered a contour drawing. What I'm gonna do now is a contour drawing. By contour, I just mean we're drawing the outline. We're not doing any of the detail just yet. Um, so I'm gonna actually add in a little bit of contour of the hair here. And there are different ways to draw portraits. Many of you, if you've taken art classes, 
you'll know that there is the method where you basically draw like an egg shape. You draw on the line for the eyes, the mouth. That's one way, and that's kind of a general way to sort of um, really kind of draw a portrait out of your head. Um, and it's great, but it requires a lot of practice. So this is really just drawing from a picture. Um, we're gonna kind of stick with that. So, you know, now that I've got these two lines down, I'm gonna go ahead and put in a line for this hand. That's on the left-hand side. That knuckle right there, the second knuckle. And there is gonna be a good chance that we're gonna move some of this stuff around. So don't worry about it being in the exact right spot. As you put in other elements, you might realize you need to move some things. So I'm using a magic rubber eraser. It's really nice. Um, what I'd recommend is if you get some gunk on there, just you know wipe it off on the side as you go along. So, all right, so now that I've got that there, that kind of gives me a place to, to go from. I've got the hairline, the sides of the face, and this hand. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put in the eyebrows. And there's a reason I'm not putting this hand in yet. It's because I wanna get everything figured out in the middle. Um, so I'm gonna put in an eyebrow there, line, same over here. And when you're doing this, I'd recommend looking at other elements in your drawing to see where that's supposed to go. So for instance, if I'm looking at this picture, I see that that eyebrow is just below this clump of hair right here. It gives me a starting point. Hey, John, um, yeah. in, in the chat, people are asking for the reference picture. Um, I, I'm not sure if it got included uh, in the you know what? pre-read. I can upload not. it right now. Bear with me for a second. All right, so it should come up, hopefully. Let me know if it doesn't. And the it's nice thing in the chat now. Awesome. And Lindsay, is this recorded? I mean, this is going to be on available online afterward, right? Yes. OK, so if you guys want to just refer to this later um, and kind of watch for now, you can always use the reference afterward and, and you know use this as a guide. Um, so now that I've got those eyebrows put in, I'm going to go ahead and start with the nose. And you know, the nose, there's a lot of line work in there, right? So I'm gonna show you the picture so you can see here. There's a lot of detail. Really what I'm looking for is just the shape of the nose. So that's all I'm getting in with these contour lines. I'm not getting in any of the detail. And then before I go any further, I wanna figure out where the bottom of the nose is, where the mouth is gonna go. So if I look at this picture, I can see, you know, the bottom of the the bottom of the nose is probably about halfway from the hair to about here, kind of using this face as a measurement. So the bottom of the chin, the hair right in the middle is where that nose is. So I'm going to go ahead and figure the chin's going to be right about here, and then somewhere in the middle, this is where my nose is going to go. So. Just put in some very simple detail there. Same for the nostrils. Okay, and don't worry about all the detail. We're just putting in shapes. Now for the mouth, I'm gonna go ahead with the upper lip. Now, if you remember what I said earlier about you know things changing, I may have to move this hand now that I've got this part of the face in, and that's totally normal. If you use something like a grid, um, and you're working from a grid that's overlaid over your picture, obviously you're just going to fill in all those little squares, and it's going to be um, perfect the whole way through. But sketching really is just all about drawing, erasing, redrawing over and over. Um, mistakes are totally okay and actually a good thing. All right, so I'm putting in the eye shapes too there. And now I'm gonna go ahead and erase what I have here. That was just sort of to get a gauge on where to go. 
And I've got a better idea. Let's see if I can focus. There we go. Of where the hand should go because of where the mouth is. All right. So I'm going to put in this knuckle. And what I'm doing is sort of looking at where everything is in relation to everything else. So if you do, hopefully you have this reference, the knuckle that kind of lines up with the center of the mouth. I'm gonna put that right there. And then start to work in the details of the other hand, looking at where it is in relation to the mouth here. All right. So again, this is just the contour. Uh, we're not going for exact detail just yet. I'm going to pull this line in a little bit because um, the face is looking a little chubby. Um, again, this is all about erasing, redrawing over and over. OK, so now that we've got that, I'm going to throw in a little bit of detail for not detail, but a contour for the hair and where the ear is. So the ear stops just below the mouth, the bottom of it, right about there. And then I've got just a little strand of hair here and the top of the head. And I'm even going to pull this hair in a little bit closer. So if you think about it, you know, in a way, this outline, this contour drawing is really kind of like your foundation. Um, you can do this for any kind of medium, really. So if you were going to use watercolor, um, if you're going to use color pencil, you know, you could put in your contour drawing with a very light pencil. Um, you could even go lighter than this. Unfortunately, anything lighter than this doesn't show up on screen very well. Um, but you know, you can go with like a 2H or a 4H um, and have a lot of success with that, um, especially when you're working with uh, watercolor. So by the time you actually put the color down, you won't even see those lines anymore. All right. So again, I'm just working with the big shapes. And I'll even put in this circle for the big hoop earring there. All right, you can see there, there we go. All right, so now that I've got my contour drawing, I'm gonna start shading. Um, and first I'll start with the hair. So I'm gonna move this down so you guys can see a little bit better. Um, and if I look at my artwork, I'm gonna use very little pressure, or look at my photo, I use very little pressure and start to shade in the edges of the hair here. And it's really important that you don't go down like super dark right away um, because it's hard to fix. And, you know, even though pencils are erasable, um, if you go super dark, it, as I'm sure many of you know, it's very hard to, to get rid of those lines. So the way that I'm shading here is just basically like um, hatching. If any of you are familiar with hatching, cross hatching, I'm just using some consecutive lines. So like one after another, very gentle, soft, um, you know, until I get to a point where I need to make it a little bit darker. And what's making up the edges of the hair are really the shadows on the forehead. I'm gonna pull this picture in again, so you guys can see. But those shadows that are on the forehead are actually making up the edges of the hair, not the hair itself. And then there's, I think this person's wearing um, like a, a band of some kind. I'm going to put that in there too. And then just add some of these edges of the hair here, like that. Same over here. And you'll notice that you can't really get too dark with this pencil, which is the point, right? Like we want, 
we're going to get darker with other pencils as we go along. Um, but for now, we're just kind of staying light. And I'm going to add a little bit of detail in here for the, the ends of the hair. Um, don't worry about it being exact. You know, part of what we're doing here is expression. So you can be expressive with it just um, in, and almost in an abstract way. You don't have to put in the actual detail, but draw on your interpretation of what, you know, the hair shadows look like. All right, so now I'm going to start working my way down to the face. Um, here on the left hand side, you'll see I'm going to start shading a little bit darker over there because you notice it's darker right where the shadow of the hair touches the face, the left side of the face. And the direction I'm working in is I'm basically making these sh the shading kind of go around the face. This is a way to sort of fake dimension. A person's face, you know, is going to like the sides of it are going to come up and then around to the front like that. So if you think of the dimension of a face and how you might even sculpt it with clay, um, that gives you a really good idea of how to, to work in these shadows. So I'm going to put some shading in the hair as well. And kind of leave it where that ear is. All right, so now that I've got that there, it, it's not going to look dark enough, and that's okay. We're going to just leave that for now. Um, so next up, we've already got some of that shading over here. I'm just going to continue the hair on the right-hand side. And finish this line here, the part of the face. All right. So I'm going to sharpen a little bit. I'm using this little, you know, um, handy dandy Prismacolor sharpener. You can use any kind of sharpener. I actually have an electric one, but um, I don't have it around right now. And those work great too. All right. So before I even get into the forehead, I'm going to draw the eyebrows. Um, and this is part of what I was saying of how like, um, you know, you kind of look at one part to figure out what the rest should look like. I'm going to do the eyebrows first so I kind of know what to do with the forehead. So with the eyebrows, the shading I'm using actually mimics the direction of the hair, the eyebrows. And I'm getting smaller as I get over here. Same with the other one. Just follow the direction of the hair follicles. And you notice it's a little darker to the left and it gets lighter as it goes out to the sides. Um, we're going to follow that same trajectory there. So now that I've got that, um, this is kind of a tricky part when you're looking at your reference. So sometimes it's not good to put all of the shading in there. If you can kind of imagine just working in the darkest and lightest parts and not going so far in between, you can do that. It's a lot more time consuming, but for all intents and purposes of the demo, we're just going to stick with the sort of like the darkest parts and the lightest parts. So what I'm going to do is put in the shading that's just under the eyebrow and the nose there. And then continue that on this side. I'm not worried about the eyes just yet because I'm basically creating this whole area up here. And then I'm going to start to do a little bit of shading here. You'll notice there's some shadow right there. Same thing here. There's some shadow that continues up. Uh, they also, there are um, blenders out there you can get. So if you really want super smooth shading, that's what I would recommend. Um, this is more of a sketchy kind of shading. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put in these shadows up here or start to just by following the form of the forehead like so. And then over here, same thing on the left-hand side. And you'll probably see little spots, and you'll notice me doing this too. As you go around, you're like, oh, I want to add something there. Just go for it. You know, This isn't a science that needs to be followed 100%. 
everybody has their own way and I'm showing you guys one way. So as you're going along, you might be like, oh, well, I wanna do this part um, next, that's fine. Uh, you know, like I said, this is just one person's way. All right, so I've got some shading there, a little bit more here. And next up, I'm going to start to work on the eyes themselves. So moving down, looking at the photo for reference, not squinting now because we wanna get this detail in here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the outline for the left eye. So it comes over and comes up a little bit, obviously for these eyelashes. And then we've got this line that comes down like that, comes over. And there's just a little bit of a shadow under there. And then some of the eyelid. So for here, you could squint and kind of get, you know, figure out where to put the shading um, if it's easier, which is what I'm doing right here. And just keep looking back and forth at your reference, you know, saying, hey, okay, what do I need to do to make this look even more like the original? All right, so I've got that. We've got a little shadow under the lower eyelid. And I'm gonna put in the pupil, iris. Um, they're pretty dark here, so we're not really concerned with, you know, all that sort of eye detail that, um, you know, you see in a lot of other places, but I'm just gonna go ahead and fill that in we're going to come back with some darker pencil for that. All right. So now that we've got that eye, we're just going to basically repeat the process over here. So drawing the almond shape. Putting in a little bit of that eyelash there. Shadow here. On the upper eyelid, there's a little bit of a shadow there. And then the bottom part of the eye. The bottom eyelid. And then the center. So now that we've got that, um, I'm actually gonna put in a little bit of shading on the white of the eye. So you can put that right just inside the corners. You see what I mean there? Same over here. All right, I'm gonna sharpen my pencil because we're gonna move on down to the rest of the face next. All right. So for the nose, obviously there isn't a line that goes across here. I'm gonna pull this over again so you can see. Um, the way that that shadow works is it comes up to a point and down and um, it's like the, the cleft of the, the, the upper lip. Um, so I'm gonna erase that line because it was really just to kind of figure out where to go. Um, and if you look, on the left side of the nose, there's a shadow that's cast on the cheek right there. And that's what's gonna create the left side of the nose. Um, the right side, there's some, a little bit of shadow here as well. And then there's a shadow that creates the right nostril just along the side of it and also underneath. So what I'm doing is really working with the shadows to create the shape of the nose. And here, got that little dip right there. And then before I get up here, I'm gonna go ahead and put the nostrils in since they are pretty dark. Um, I saw somebody commented about the nose ring. And so here, just because of the nature of this being an expressive drawing, we're not gonna go crazy with detail, but what you can do is 
you know, draw your little hoop like that. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and bring that curve around. And we're accentuating this a little bit. Obviously in the photo, there is no contour outline around that nose ring, but we're giving it that um, because that's one of the, the nice things about obviously drawing with something like a pencil is that you can exaggerate. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly like a photograph and that's kind of what's nice about it. All right, so I'm gonna finish that nostril there. And then on the left-hand side, Draw that one. And continue with the shading. So there's a, a shadow that is basically underneath the bottom of the nose that we're seeing, because this is a photo from, you know, shot from below. And what I'm doing is sort of shading in a diagonal direction to sort of help you know, create that plane, the bottom of the nose itself. And then down here, it gets a little bit darker. And then I got a shadow over here, just like that. Hey, John. Yeah. There was a question about um, if you like these uh, Prismacolor pencils for drawing portraits better than, than other brands. I do. Um, I think that they have a really nice range to them. I basically have been using these since I was in college um, and I love them for that reason. So, um, you know, and I do, I actually in a way prefer, you know, some of the lighter ones, but like I said, for all intents and purposes of the video, um, the darker ones are really nice. And if we had more time, I could go through that whole range and create, um, you know, a, a portrait with all of them because they're really good. Um, but, you know, that would take a few hours actually to do that. So, all right, so now that I've got the shading in there, um, you might notice, okay, it doesn't really have that much range here, but we're gonna, you know, like I said, go in with darker pencils too. So now that I've got the nose, I'm gonna work on the mouth itself. I'm gonna sharpen here for a second. And I mean, there are other, you know, obviously other brands out there, but, um, I think that there's just a nice consistency to these pencils. All right, so that's a shadow on the cheek on the left-hand side. Um, let me just soften that a little bit with the eraser. So you can soften with your eraser, obviously, as well. All right, so now for the, the lip. Um, the mouth is just an interesting shape or combination of shapes, I should say. So with this, you've got... Um, you know, a curved line on the left-hand side it dips down in the middle, and then a curved line on the right that curls up. Both sides curl up a little bit. Um, you got a line that comes over here and underneath, right? And then the bottom of the lip here. So what I'm doing is I'm creating that contour, just accentuate, uh, accentuating it, sorry, exaggerating it. But now I'm gonna shade. So if you notice, on this mouth, I'm going to pull it up again. Um, the shape of the texture kind of goes from, you know, the bottom part of that lip and up, right? And you've got these concentric lines almost that work that way. So we're going to shade in that same direction, just like we shaded the hair in that direction. Um, so if I go in little curves like this, it helps create the lip shape. And I'm just going lightly, you know, kind of filling out wherever I can and then leaving the lightest parts white. So I've got sort of a white area right there, white area right here. And using these lines to really push that dimension. And then I can go back, kind of add some darker spots. All right, and then now I'm gonna move on to the lower lip. Same kind of idea, um, just some light lines here. 
you know, since it's mostly like it's very light there. Um, and then get darker as I go down. All right. So I got my lower lip and then the shadow that's just below that's cast by the mouth itself. And I think I'm going to leave the hands for now. I'll see if we have time for that. Um, and then just focus on the rest of the face and then we can move on to the other, the other shades. All right, so I've got that down. And now we're going to do basically the rest of the face. So I've got a little bit of shadow over here that I missed, you know, on the left hand side of the eye. Um, We've got some shading here that happens with the cheeks. So I would be really, really soft here and then get darker as I go down because you see how that shading starts off light and gets darker. So again, following the direction of the, um, the surface of the face so I can get some dimension there. Hey, John. Yeah. Um, a question came up about what number of pencil you are using. So this is the H pencil. Um, it's the lightest one in this pack of turquoise pencils. So, um, you know, you'll work your way up from H from light to dark. We're going to go HB next and then 2B and then 4B um, and probably finish some, with some really dark for the blacks. All right, so same deal. Um, you know, the thing about H pencils too, like I said, they stay sharper longer. If you want to get really soft line gradients here, um, I'm actually going to do this right now. You can wear your pencil down a little bit. Um, and that way you're just not working with so much dark. Um, you can get some softer shadows. But and this may look dark now, but once we actually put down some darker tones, um, it'll change how all this looks. All right, so I've got shading here, and then a shadow there. And then there's this shadow on the right hand side of the face, the cheek. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of sketch in that hand so we know where to stop. All right, so now that we sort of have like, I would call this our base tone, um, the lightest tone here for the face, I'm gonna move on to HB pencil. So like I said, this is somewhere between, you know, a hard and a soft lead um, and it's nice and versatile. Um, just so you know, most pencils, those number two pencils are 2B. So they're pretty soft. Um, they'll give you a, a, a good like dark color. And so now I'm going to go ahead and kind of go in a little bit darker here. So I've got some darker tones in the hair. Where that little, like it's like a sweatband is. And then the shadows that are cast on the face. And start to work in some of that hair detail. Some darker shadow on the face also. There. And then here, just continuing the same deal. So you can see now that we've gone in with a little bit darker, you can start to see this dimension take shape. Whereas it may have looked a little, little flat earlier.
And, you know, like I said, if you, um, you want to get really in depth, um, you know, with the kind of shading you can do, I would recommend going out and getting even uh, more of a range of pencils, get like, you know, some light pencils to um, shade even lighter with. All right. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead to and kind of shade in, just suggest the ear. I'm not really, you know, concerned with the detail there. But um, that's the great thing about this is that you don't have to actually put in all the detail that you see. Um, you know, when you suggest stuff, when you suggest an eye or a piece of hair or whatever, the viewer's mind makes up the rest of it. So they kind of, you know, fill in the blanks. All right, I've got a, a hoop earring. Like so. All right. So now for the eyebrows, you'll notice like the darkest parts are sort of in the center. Go ahead and add that. And it changes basically how everything else looks. Now everything else looks light. Um, you know, we can add a little bit more shading in with the HB. And then here, the other eyebrow, like so. And that changes how this looks too. So I'm going to put a little bit more darkness there, like that. And then moving on to the eyes, you know, now I can really just kind of bring home this dark part of the eyelid and the eyelashes. Same here. And then the lower eyelid. And then if you notice, if you're looking at the reference, there is um, sort of a darker outside of the eye, the pupil, uh, the iris. So we'll use this pencil to do that. There's always like a bit of a shadow over the center of the eye from the eyelid too. And then just the center, the pupil there. All right, sharp my pencil. and move on to the left eye. So same deal here, um, you know, using the HB, just working on the darkest parts. And as you play around with this, like the more you draw this way and the, um, the more you use these kinds of pencils, you get a feel for, you know, every shade and knowing like where to stop. Um, and it's all relative, you know? So like once I, if I go in now with like an 8B, all this stuff is gonna look super light, even though it looks pretty dark compared to what we started with. The other thing about these pencils is, so H pencils, you can rest your hand on it and not worry about it smearing as much. But as you get softer in lead and darker in color, um, they are much easier to smear. So if you're working and you're really serious about something and you want it to you know, be perfect and um, continue throughout, I would suggest getting some kind of spray fixative. And I think Michael, I'm sure Michael sells it. I know about it there before. Um, that can be used on graphite. And basically every time you put down something, you can spray that on it. Um, usually it's workable. Like you can go back in to a degree and do some erasing, but for the most part, your hand won't mess it up. Um, all right. So I'm starting to add some darker shadows here. You know, wherever I see the darkest part. And obviously the nostrils are pretty dark. Okay, um, so again, if I wanted to smooth this out, I could use a blender. Um, it's usually made of paper for graphite. Um, 
and you can just sort of smooth that out that way. All right, so now I'm gonna continue down and just keep doing what I did earlier, but obviously going with darker colors or darker pencil um, and work on the mouth. So what's interesting is, I don't know if any of you ever heard of a reflected light, but the way the reflected light works is, so everything that has light coming from the top is gonna to have a shadow underneath. But sometimes there's something, whatever surface it's on, like if it's a ball on a surface, there's light from that surface that comes up. In this case, that light is actually bouncing off the lower lip and coming up into the upper lip. And it, if you notice, there's like the shadow's a little bit darker at the top, but it's lighter in the center and it's really dark at the bottom. That light in the center is called reflected light and it's coming from whatever's underneath. So if you, you know, use your darker pencil and kind of really focus on creating that line, um, it's one of those cool little tricks that I think people love to see. Um, they love to see reflected light. It just looks really cool. It really gives your artwork definition. And you can exaggerate it. You don't have to be exactly like the picture. Um, so that's what I'm doing now. If I just exaggerate that reflected light, all of a sudden, like, wow, that looks really uh, better than it did um, because it looks a little bit more three-dimensional. Um, this same kind of you know technique could be used for metallics and reflective stuff also. So now I've got, you know, the lower shadow there. And then I'm going to darken the shadow underneath the lower lip. And there's a similar kind of reflected light thing happening here. So the darker shadow is at the top. There's a bit of a dark shadow at the bottom. And there's some light in the center. This is one of those things that you learn like in art school when people have you draw an apple 400 times and it you know leaves a shadow on the table and then the light from the table comes up and actually is caught in the shadow that's on the apple itself. Um, all right, so obviously these shadows get a little darker toward the bottom. I'm just going to continue that using the same hatching technique. So I knew people that I went to school with um, that would use their finger to blend their pencils. And hey, whatever works for you. For me, I just don't like you know um, the unpredictability of that. So I, I would use a blender, and I would recommend that. But you know, again, if you have something else you want to use, go for it. All right. So. Um, I'm going to add this little bit of definition for where the chin begins or ends, I guess you should say, I should say. Um, just a little bit of shadow right there. And this is just one way of shading. You know, right now I'm, I'm just showing a, an example of cross hatching. So cross hatching is when those lines kind of go over each other. Um, if you think of it in terms of like, almost like plaid, you know, um, and that's just a different way of shading. And you might find it works better for certain applications. All right, so I've got a shadow that's actually cast by the hand there. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and put the dark shadow over here. So there's some reflected light in this shadow also. You know, it's darker at the edge. It's actually one of the reasons I picked this picture because it has a lot of reflected light in the face. Um, it's kind of nice. All right. Now a little bit more shadow there. Um, all right, so now I'm gonna move on to the next shade. So I just, and a little bit more up there. <laughs> I feel like, so I heard a quote once that like, a, um, an art, a drawing is never finished or a painting is never finished. It just stops somewhere interesting. I feel like I could work on a drawing for the rest of my life if I just, you know, didn't stop myself. Um, it's kind of crazy, but because um, you could just keep perfecting and perfecting and perfecting. All right. Um, now that I've gotten through HB, I move on to B. So B is like sort of your beginner's soft pencil. Um, again, this is the one where you kind of kind of have to be careful of smearing. Um, so 
if you're going to go darker, I would suggest, you know, kind of trying to draw from a different angle as opposed to resting your hand on the drawing. Now we can do it. It's not going to be a big deal because we've used mostly H pencils. Um, all right, so now I'm going to go ahead even darker. I realize I missed a shadow in here, but it's fine because it's a really dark shadow. And you can press pretty hard where it gets almost black. Um, you can still shade with these pencils. You know, it's not as light as the H pencil, um, but you might find that you like it. Uh, all right. That. So just got a little bit more dark over here. Really, it's just this is now we're like basically fine tuning. Um, same over here, wherever the deepest shadows are. Nostrils. I realize I just skipped the eyes, but I'm not, I'm not ignoring them. I'm going to go back to them. All right. And for the eyes, you know, if there's anything else, um, maybe like right at the very edge. And the edges of the eye itself. Put a little bit more shadow in there. So if you notice now the eyes just look deeper, richer. Um, they get your attention a little bit more. And we can even use this. So right now I've been doing hatching, but this is called the scribble shading technique. I'm going to pull this down so you can see. But essentially, if you're going like this, um, you know, it works better with these pencils for the darker fills. So that's why I'm going to do that. And it also, we can give some edges to the eyelashes this way. So by just going this little bit of a scribble shading technique. Like that. All right. And then here, I'm going to put in that shadow there just to help define the face a little bit more. And then kind of go over some other parts of the face um, where I may have missed some shadows, some darker parts of the eyebrows, that kind of thing. So if you want, and this is, you know, when I was saying about isolating um, the darkest parts of the shadows and the lightest parts of the shadows, you can add more shadows. I, I say this with caution. So like, especially if you're drawing a baby, um, babies are really difficult because if you put in all the detail, they kind of look like old, I don't know, like a zombie or something. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and actually start to shade in this more literally to the photo. So if you notice, if I pull the photo in here, you've got, um, a lot more in there than what I have. And at this point, you know, okay, there's some lighter stuff on top. You can actually go back. Like I'm gonna go back with my H and just put in some lighter areas there. So even though, you know, you start with a lighter tone to kind of get things going and get the ball rolling and get your contour drawing in there, I definitely recommend going back in with your lighter tones, especially if you want to fine tune. So now I'm going to soften some of these shadows in the face. Um, just so it's a little bit cleaner. And then the same goes for over here. just to give it some more dimension. So um, Prismacolor also makes a really nice kneaded eraser. 
um, if any of you are familiar with it, aren't familiar with it, it's, um, it kind of has a, um, it's like a bendable, posable eraser. It's gray. Um, it comes in other colors too, but um, it's nice because um, you can just use it and reuse it and it doesn't seem to hold on to pencil that much. Um, and the Magic Rub is great too, but the nice thing too is with a kneaded, you can get really small, um, you know, areas with it. So like, for instance, little parts of the eye and, um, you know, parts of the face where you want highlights to really look crisp, um, you can use a kneaded eraser for that. And here, I think I may have gone overboard with the ear a little bit, but that's okay. All right, so finally, I'm gonna wrap it up by going to a really dark color, just because I wanna, a really dark shade, just because I wanna show you the difference. So now we think we've got, you know, a tonal range here, but this is um, a 6B. So let's see if I can pull it up so you can see it. There we go. Um, so now if I were to go in, you know, to this eye and start coloring, you know, drawing, um, it changes everything. So. And of course, it's not showing up as much on screen, um, but in real life, it's darker. So, um, you know, and it's just a lot softer of a lead, more striking. Um, you know, you can even use this to outline your drawing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and accentuate a few things, you know, like the eyebrows, the eyes themselves. And kind of put a little bit more shadow in here for the eye, the white of the eye. Um, you know, and and even though we have dark and light pencils, all of them have a range of shading based on your pressure. So how much pressure you place when you hold it down um, and press it against the paper. So I'm gonna exaggerate the edges a little bit, you know, like I said, kind of give an outline, even though it's not there. And you could even use it to draw an outline, like I said, around your drawing. Because even though in this picture, you know, there's such a strong highlight at the top of the hair that you don't see an edge, you can go ahead and just create an edge, right? Like it doesn't have to be exactly like the photo. So something along those lines. And I'm gonna put a little bit of this darker shadow on the lip as well. And I'm sure you've noticed that, you know, we haven't even used this pencil very much, but already the point is starting to uh, break down. So that's just because of the nature of the lead, the graphite rather. That is not really lead anymore. <laughs> I, uh, when I was a kid, I stabbed myself with a pencil in the hand. I don't even know how I did it. And I know many people have done the same thing and I still have a little piece of pencil stuck in there. I don't know what that means, but it's there. All right. Um, so that, I mean, is essentially it. You can go in and add any other details you like as you go along. I'm actually gonna go ahead off on the side and just break down these, uh, just to show you, and you can do this on your own, um, the shading differences. So for instance, here's my H pencil. And if I just, you know, were to sort of shade a square of H and then move on to HB, you see a clear difference. And then move on to my B. Um, a bit darker. And then 2B.
So, you know, as you're going, you might be like, well, is it really any different? That now you can see um, it, how different it is. And I mean, if you look up a picture of a sphere on the internet, you know, and, and just try to shade the same way that I did here um, with a sphere or a cube or a cylinder, it's just a really good way to start learning how to draw in dimension. Um, the same way that I sort of, you know, shaded around the face, you would shade around a sphere the same way. So just to kind of give you a sense of that, um, you know, like there's that. And I've already got some reflected light going, even though I have no real reference here. Um, but I think you get the idea. So like this kind of thing, just, you know, drawing a sphere. There are also books upon books at Michael's um, that you can get for this sort of thing. And there's also reflected light on the cast shadow. So this is called the cast shadow, um, you know, and there's usually a reflected light in the center of that as well. And then there's usually a little bit of dark light underneath whatever object it is. So, um, and yeah, like, like I said, this is all, there, there's free stuff out there. There's more classes like this you can check out. Um, and again, if you wanna, you know, um, follow me on Instagram and um, Twitter. I post a lot of how-to videos and process stuff online. Um, I'm actually gonna be putting up, I have this painting behind me that I've been working on for about a year. I'm gonna show like half the process. Um, so yeah, if you wanna check it out, that's a good place. Um, or if you even wanna like send me some of your stuff, I'd love to see it. And actually, um, I think you guys can all share here. I would love to see what everybody did. Change the view gallery. Very nice. Wow, I see some people just went ahead and drew something that they had near them. Christina, that is lovely. Um, yeah, these are really nice, you guys. Wow, wow. I love to see that some people got further along than I did. <laughs> it's really cool. Really, really beautiful stuff. And obviously every face is different, but you know, um, I can even just tell you some more tricks that you might not be aware of. So that generally, um, generally, this isn't always, but with a mouth, the corners of the mouth usually line up with the center of the pupil. So it's a weird little trick. Um, like I said, it doesn't always work. I mean, everybody's face is different. And then generally the ear, now this person is shot from above, so the ear doesn't work this way, but a straight on face, generally the bottom of the ear lines up with the, the mouth line and the top lines up with the eye line. So those are some just little tricks that you can try, um, especially if you want to just kind of draw a face out of your head and work from there. Um, and all this stuff is available at Michael's. Um, this is the magic rubber eraser I was talking about. It's really nice. It holds up very well. Um, sharpener uh, and the kneaded eraser. I don't have a kneaded eraser on me. I wish I had it, um, but I highly recommend it. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else I could kind of go over. As far as the hands go, you know, it would basically follow the same um, technique that we did for the face, um, just working this out with the hands. And the hands can be tricky, so you don't want to put in too much detail because they can, they can end up being kind of gnarly. Um, but yeah, that's all. I hope you guys had a great class and um, I hope to see you in person someday. So thanks, take care.